It was always sit down, surely Valentine. Go away, surely Valentine. And one day, surely Valentine. Just wasn't there anymore. A bird. Is born to fly, born for the moment it takes to the sky and all its dreams are riding on in its wings. But if it falls, the dreams aren't broken as long as the wind. The sky is always there. Oh, the girl who used to be me, she could fly. She was free, and she rose. Doors down. Talk to a microwave. Talking to a microwave wall. What's the world coming to? I know I'm wicked, aren't I? Drinking. I like a glass of wine when I'm doing the cooking. Don't I, wall? Don't I like a glass of wine when I'm preparing the evening meal? Chips and egg. What'll he be like, eh, Ball? My fella. What'll he be like when he finds out he's only gotten chips and egg for his tea? Well, it's Thursday, you see. And if it's Thursday, it has to be steak. It's the eleventh commandment. Moses declared it. Thou shalt give thy fella steak every Thursday. And if thou doesn't, thy fella will have one big gob on him all night long. I wouldn't mind. It's not even my bloody fault about the steak. You see, this morning, Gillian came round. I don't normally have much to do with Gillian. I'm not saying she's a bragger, but if you've been to paradise, she's got a season ticket. She's that type, Gillian, you know. If you've got a headache, she's got a brain tumour. Oh, <laughs> hello, Shirley. Uh, it appears your bell isn't working. Do you think perhaps there's something wrong with it? That's how she talks, Gillian. You know, she begrudges you the breath. I, I don't know. There must be a power cut. Ah, well, there, you see, Eric and I have installed solar energy. Now we would never be caught out by a power failure. Shirley, I've come to ask a favour. Can you come over for a minute? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. You see, Eric and I have to go away for a couple of days. Eric's giving a paper in Brussels. Bloody Brussels. I said to him, why couldn't it have been Paris or even Amsterdam? I really find Brussels such a bore. Yeah, it must be. All those sprouts. I'd made arrangements for Mummy to feed Claymore, but you find now she can't do this evening. So, if you could manage. Now, we keep Claymore's food in here. Now, it's terribly simple, Shirley. You simply mix his muesli with about half a pint of milk. Doesn't he have meat? Oh, Shirley. We have 
hadn't had meat in this house for years. Didn't you know we'd become vegans? No, I thought you were still Church of England. <laughs> now, it's one bowl, Shirley. One bowl twice a day. Claymore loves his muesli, don't you, Clay, darling? Mm, a vegetarian bloodhound. Come on, that's it, Claymore, darling. There. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. Claymore, darling. It's your favourite. Mm. I hope you're not sick. You only had to take one look at that dog to see it was well and truly sick. Sick of the sight of muesli. Oh, you're off your food. Mm. Because Mummy was five mm. minutes late with it. Is that it? Mm. He'll want his dinner sharp at ten past five, and then he has a run in the garden. is it? I mean, if God had wanted to create a vegetarian dog, he wouldn't have made you a bloodhound, would he? Mm. He'd have made you a yogurt hound or a veggie burger hound. But you're a bloodhound. You need meat. Mm. Wait till you see what I've got for you. You wait till you taste this, Clay. Nice dinner. But you've never tasted anything like this. Now then, you get your chops round this. Come on, Clay. It's your birthday. Guts. That's just tea you're guzzling. I think Chip Snag's nice for a change, don't you? <laughs> Mind you. I don't think Joe will see it quite like that. Oh, sod it. Have another glass of wine, Shirley. Never used to drink wine. It was Armalandra got me started on this. She said to me, she said, Everybody drinks wine now. But I like rum and coke, for God's sake. Rum and coke went out with the arch, didn't it, Sharon Louise? Mm -hmm. Anyway, they don't sell rum and coke in here. It's a wine bar. Look, they sell wine. What, just wine? Oh, for God's sake. But there's thousands of different varieties of wine, Mrs Bradshaw. I like Alsatian wine. And that's what we're going to have. Kids. They know everything, don't they? Armalandra shares a flat with Sharon Louise. They're fascinated by sex. I suppose I'd have been the same if I'd been born into their generation, cos they discovered it, you see. The clitoris. The clitoris kids, I call them, and good luck to them. Don't begrudge them a thing. Mind you, it was different in my day. <laughs> do, you know, do you know, when I was a girl, we never even cared the clitoris. Oh, oh, what? What? In those days, everyone thought it was just a case of in, out, in, out, shake it all about. <laughs> Stars would light up the sky and the earth would tremble. Hey, the only thing that trembled for me was the headboard on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, when I first read about it, I thought it was pronounced clitoris. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think it sounds nicer that way. <laughs> that, that even sounds like it could be a name, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, oh, oh, hi, clitoris. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> that makes it sound a bit crude somehow. No. Oh, oh, shut up. <laughs> Plenty of men walking around called Dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's the way I thought it was pronounced when I first mentioned it to Joe. You know, sitting in the front room one night. <laughs> I said, I said, Joey. I said, Joe, have you ever heard of the clitoris? <laughs> he didn't even look up from his paper. Yeah, he said. But it doesn't go as well as the Ford Escort. Ah, <laughs> oh, they were great, those mates. I don't see them anymore. Oh well, that's the way it goes. And now Melandra's gone and, and our Brian's left home as well. He's living in a squat now in Kirby. It's like Beirut on a bad day. 
Do you like it, Mum? <laughs> well, it's got that lived-in look. We're going to plant flowers. Oh, son. If you're going to live in a squat, couldn't you pick somewhere nice? You know, somewhere like Moulton or Childwall. Mother, Childwall is no place for a poet. A what? A poet, ma'am. I've become a poet. I went down the job centre today and signed on as a poet. Britain's first ever street poet. Is there much call for that sort of thing round here? Watch. Don't rob cars, it's mad, it's bad. Think of your mars, it'd make them sad. Your mothers would get a broken heart if you got smashed up. Get wise, get smart. Don't rob cars. Piss off. Poets have always had a hard time of it. I do miss them, though, the kids. Don't I, Wool? There's only me and him now. What's he like? My fella. What's he like, eh, Wool? Well, he walked in one night with a smile on his face and we didn't recognise him. We thought we had a lodger, didn't we? He used to laugh, Joe. We both did. Hey, Wool, do you remember when we first moved in here? Oh, that seems a long time ago. We hadn't long been married. Hey! What? I can do my own makeup, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Well, it's only a speck. You're bound to get a bit of paint when you're doing a job like this, aren't you? Hey. You did that on purpose, didn't you? Did what? Little bugger. Did this. No! <laughs> yes. No, stop, Shirley, stop! You bugger. Ta -da. No, no. I'll get you. No! <laughs> 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 Young things getting a bath together. Does this mean we're perverted? You're a nutcase, you are. Mm -hmm. I love you, Shirley Valentine. Remember that wall? He used to love me because I was a nutcase. Now he just thinks I am a nutcase. Mm. Oh, it's lovely, that. It's not too dry. Some of it has stripped the palette off you, wouldn't it? But this is lovely. Do you know what I'd like to do, Wall? I'd like to drink a glass of wine in a country where the grape is grown. Sitting by the sea, just sipping wine and watching the sun go down. What's going on here? Who the bloody hell are you talking to? To the wall. To the what? The wall! Any objections? Never mind the bleeding wall. It's nearly six o'clock. Get on with getting me tea. Oh, my God. Six o'clock and his tea isn't ready. Will the government collapse? Does this mean the end of civilization as we know it? I always have my tea at six o'clock. So just think how exciting it would be if for once you had it at quarter past six. Let's make the headlines. World exclusive. Joe eats late. 
I think you're going round the bend. Oh, I do hope so. I've always wanted to travel. Now listen. No, you listen. Go and get washed and go and sit and watch the telly. You'll have your tea when it's ready. I always said I'd leave him when the kids grew up. But by the time they'd grown up, there was nowhere to go. I'm not saying he's bad, my fella. He's just no bleeding good. I don't hate men. I'm not a feminist. I'm not like Jane. Jane's my mate. I was having tea with her in a cafe the other day. Now, Jane is a feminist. Well, she likes to think she is. She reads Cosmopolitan and she says, All men are potential rapists. Even the Pope? Of course. All men, without exception. Look. What? Him. What about him? Since we arrived, he hasn't taken his eyes off us. He spent the whole time undressing us. Go away. Good job I put me clean underwear on. Jane divorced her husband. I never knew him. It was before I met her. Apparently, she came home from work unexpectedly one morning and found him in bed with the milkman. Honest to God, the milkman. Well, from that day forward, I've noticed she never takes milk in her tea. Shelley, listen. I went in for a magazine competition and I won it. A fortnight's holiday for two in Greece. How about that? Jane, what are we going to do without you for two weeks? You're the only one I ever talk to. Won't I miss you? No, you won't. Because you're coming with me. What? I've got it all fixed. Tomorrow morning, we go to the travel agents and pick the tickets up. Oh, but Jane, I can't. Yes, you can. And I don't want to vote a thanks or a speech about how grateful you are. You'll be doing me a big favour by coming with me. All set. Tuesday week. And we're off. I don't suppose you've got a passport, have you? No, but Jane, I... Oh. Jane, what about Joe? Jane, it's impossible. Of course it's possible. It's perfectly possible. Just forget about Joe. You're married to him, not joined up for him. Has he ever taken you abroad? No, he... He never go abroad. He hates travelling. He gets culture shock when we go to Chester. Well, that's all right, then, because he's not going, and you are. <laughs> I told Joe I was going to Greece for a week. He'd think I was going for the sex. Well, let him. I wouldn't mind. I'm not particularly fond of it, sex. I think sex is like supermarkets. You know, overrated. Just a lot of pushing and shoving and you still come out with very little at the end. You get them out of here. Listen, Jane, what about Joe? Look, Shirley, if Joe doesn't want to go abroad, if he wants to behave like every other boring insular Englishman, then that's his prerogative. But you do want to go abroad. You've said so on many occasions, and now you can. That's your prerogative. It's no problem, Shirley. It's perfectly logical. I know it's logical, dead logical. But you can't bring logic into this. We're talking about marriage. Marriage is like the Middle East. There's no solution. God, oh, I look like the back end of a tram smash. Right, now then, come on. Bikini. Bikini? With my stretch marks? I, I'd be arrested for bringing the human form into disrepute. Oh, get away. Listen, Jane, how am I going to tell Joe that I'm off to Greece for a fortnight? Oh, by the way, Joseph, I'm, I'm just popping off to Greece for a fortnight. Yeah, yeah ju I just thought I'd mention it so you can put it down in your diary. You won't mind doing your own washing and cooking for a couple of weeks, will you, doll? Nothing to it, babe. The brown blob on the right of the kitchen is the washing machine and the white blob on the left is the cooker. And don't get them mixed up or you might end up with socks on toast. Some chance, eh, well, some chance. Jesus, if I go to the bathroom for five minutes, he thinks I've been hijacked. Still here, then, are we? Haven't forgot me, then, eh? It won't be long now. 
See what I mean? Oh, I never should have taken the bloody tickets off her in the first place. I'll phone Jane tomorrow. She'll easily find someone else to go with her. And there was me when I was a girl. The only thing I ever wanted to do was travel. I wanted to be a courier or an air hostess. There's a stimulation for the brain. But there was only the clever ones who got to do things like that. The ones like Marjorie Majors. I used to sit next to her in class. In the world. Marjorie? Miss, although it's often assumed that Niagara Falls are the highest, I think, in fact, it's actually the Angel Falls. Marjorie took private allocution lessons. Can you tell me in what country we would find Angel Falls? Venezuela, miss. Excellent. 25 house points. Some general that makes four billion house points she's got so far. And let us address ourselves to my next question. What was man's most important invention? <laughs> oh, do put your hand down, Shirley. You couldn't possibly know the answer. But, miss? Lorraine? The Sputnik, miss. No. It's the who's But I knew I had the right answer. No. Is it the automatic washing machine, miss? No. Because I got it from my dad. The aeroplane, miss. And he got it from the Encyclopedia no. Britannica. Well, come along, Marjorie. The internal combustion engine, miss. No, Marjorie. Miss? I was nearly wetting myself. Miss? Knowing I was on the point of receiving 43,000 house points, a blessing from the Pope and the OBE thrown in. Oh, very well, Shirley. You might as well get it wrong along with everybody else. What was man's most important invention? Miss, it was the wheel. <laughs> Miss, it was the wheel. Man's most important invention was... Somebody must have told you. Well, how the bleeding hell else could I learn it? Be quiet! But, Miss, it's not fair. Miss Lloyd the him. And all my house points and my blessing from the Pope just disappeared before my eyes. I was never really interested in school after that. I became a rebel. I used to wear my school skirt so high you'd have thought it was a serviette. I was marvellous. I used to exude boredom out of every pore and I hated everything. What did you have last lesson? Science. It's garbage science. Laura. What did you do in it? She showed us this film with these rabbits having a screw. Any good? Super boring. I don't even like them in stew. I hate them. Rabbits. I hate the world. I hate everything. It's all garbage. It's lost. It's crap and I hate it. But I didn't really hate anything. The only thing I hated was me. Hey. Do you want a drag? <laughs> Do you think she'll tell? She's a cow. She gives me the irrits. Shirley Valentine! damage your health and I can damage your health. God, can't you be evil when you're a kid? I used to pick on Marjorie something rotten. And all the time, I suppose I really wanted to be like her. Your report is excellent as usual. I'm particularly delighted to hear that you're going to stay on with us to do your A-levels, which will lead to your eventual entry into university. Congratulations, my dear. Thank you, miss. And now we come to Miss Valentine. Well, Shirley, naturally you are leaving us. And a brief glance at your report confirms my deep suspicion. You'll not go far in life. 
which perhaps is just as well. <laughs> Given your marks in geography, you're truly at last. Well, tickle my tits till Friday. <laughs> Miss Valentine, will you please come back? After I left, I never saw any more of her, Marjorie Majors. Then, a few weeks ago, I was on my way home from town, you know, loaded down with shopping. Shirley Valentine. Marjorie Majors. I'd recognise those elocution lessons anywhere. It is. It's Shirley. My God, you're drenched. Come in and have tea. Well, Marjorie. You've waited a long time for your revenge, but you got me in good style now. Well, go on. Dig the knife in quick and let's get it over with. Tell me all about you being an air hostess on Concord. I can't believe it, Shirley. After all these years. I know, and I haven't changed a bit, have I? Still kept my youthful complexion. <laughs> We've got to get you out of those wet things. Here we are. Thanks, Marjorie. Oh, that's better. Hello. Now, I want to know everything that's happened to you. I want the whole story from A to Z. Got a postage stamp. I'll write it down for you. Won't you sit down, Shirley? Do you have children? Yeah. Tell me about them. Are they like you? Uh, well, Armalandra's a bit of a mare and Brian's a head case, so, yeah, they are like me. <laughs> well, this is great, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, where, where are you off to next? Paris. Tonight, I'm afraid. Is that where you live now? No, I'm based in London, but uh, I travel all over. From Paris, it's Athens, I think. That's Greece, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Remember that from geography? All those islands. <laughs> That's right. Shall I pour now, madam? Please. This is my friend Marjorie. We were at school together. Marjorie's an air hostess now. On Concord. Uh, pardon, darling? An air hostess? <laughs> my God, Shirley, whatever gave you that idea? I certainly travel widely, but I'm not an air hostess. Darling, I'm a hooker. I'm a whore. Oh, madam, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll get you some more. Never mind, just leave it. What do we want tea for, anyway? This calls for a celebration. I just can't believe it. You a hooker? Honest, Marjorie? Yes, honest. And all that money your mother spent on those elocution lessons? Do you know something? I always hated the way I had to speak. I still do. I think you speak lovely. You, Marjorie Majors, a hooker. <laughs> the top class hooker, of course. Mind you, I always was top of the class, wasn't I? Are you shocked, darling? No, no, I'm not. We're just thinking about all those house points. <laughs> Oh. Is that our class? Yes. Oh, my God. Look at me hair. That's your favourite? Yeah, that cow, Miss Dayton. Remember Marjorie? 
Smoking is bad for your health. God, what a pain in the neck I was. No, you weren't. Do you know, I never forgave myself for what I did to that beautiful souffle of yours. Yes? Yes. Oh, right. Tell him I'll be down in five minutes. Hell, it's my car for the airport. Oh, I wish I didn't have to go. It's been such a lovely afternoon. Yeah. And, do you know, when I first saw you, I almost fled. Why? Ah, I don't know why. I thought you'd come lording it over me. Me? Lording it over you? Don't you realise I wanted to be like you? And I wanted to be like you. If only we'd known. Could have been great mates, you know, real close. It's been fun, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, you're off to Paris now. That's lovely. Yes. But I'd rather be here talking to you. Well, then. Can we give you a lift? No, I'm fine, thanks. I've still got a bit more shopping to do. And there was real affection in that kiss. It was the sweetest kiss I'd known in years. Goodbye, Shirley. Goodbye, Shirley Valentine. Goodbye, Shirley Valentine. What happened to her? What happened to Shirley Valentine? She got married to a boy called Joe. And even though her name was changed to Bradshaw, she was still Shirley Valentine for a while. She knew who she was. But somewhere along the way, the boy called Joe turned into him. And Shirley Valentine turned into this. And what I can't remember is the day, or the week, or the month, or... When it happened, when it stopped being good, when Shirley Valentine disappeared and became just another name on the missing persons list. He says he still loves me, you know. He doesn't. It's just something he says. It's funny, isn't it, I love you? It's like it makes everything all right. Like, like you can be beaten and battered and half insane, and if you complain, he'll say, what's wrong? You know, I love you. I love you. They should bottle it and sell it. It cures everything. And I know what you're thinking. Why don't I leave? Well, I'm terrified, if you want to know. I'm terrified that if I left, there'd be nowhere for me to go. No place for me in the life beyond the wall. When I was a girl, I used to jump off our roof. Is it ready, then? I get me tea at six o'clock and it's nearly ten past. What's going on? It's ready. Sit down. What's this, then? What? What is this? Well, it looks very like chips and egg to me, but maybe it's a trick question. It's Thursday. We have steak on Thursday. We always have steak on Thursday. Well, all right, it's Thursday, but we're having chips and egg for a change. You like chips and egg? On a Tuesday. I like chips and egg. On a Tuesday. Today is Thursday. Well, pretend it's Tuesday. Where's my steak? I give it the dog. What dog? Gillian's dog across the street. 
Is this it? Have you finally gone round a friggin' pipe? Look at me. I'm working from morning till night. Working me tripe out. And what do I find? You talking to the wall. Giving me tea to any friggin' straight dog that comes along. And I'm expected to eat this. Well, I'm not eating this. I'm not eating shite. Chips and egg. Chips and friggin' egg. And I'm working all the hours of God sends. I don't know why I bother. I don't know what I'm doing it all for. What's that? It's a place. It's a place I'm going to. Oh, I get it. That's the name of the game, is it? I'm not getting fed properly because you're saving for a foreign friggin' holiday. Well, I'm telling you now, you can just forget it. I am not going to no Greece. Get it? doing here? I, I'm just buying a few. They're quite nice, aren't they? <laughs> it's marvellous what they can do with man-made fibres these days, isn't it? You'd almost think it was silk if you weren't familiar with the real thing. <laughs> but I expect they're quite nice for your Melandra. Oh, no, Gillian, I'm not buying them for Melandra. I'm buying them for myself. Oh, these are better, yes. Yes, um, but I shan't be wearing them for myself. I shall be wearing them for my lover. Yes, we fly out tomorrow, my lover and I, for a fortnight in the Greek islands. Just two weeks of sun, sand, drama, salata, and whatever else takes our fancy. Oh, well, I must be off now, Gillian. Still got a few more things to buy. Uh, I don't suppose you noticed which count of the garter belts were on, did you? No. Oh, well, never mind. I'll find them. ta da Gillian. Money, passport tickets, money. Four o'clock, Jane's picking me up. Ten past eleven. Oh, I feel sick. Those travel sickness pills mustn't be working. I still feel sick, and I've taken four already. And I've only travelled up and down the stairs. Passport, tickets, money. I've got a full one wall, proper passport. Well, you never know, Shirley. This could be the start of something. This year, Greece. Next year, the world. Oh, God, I know I should have told him. Ten days I've been secretly ironing and packing. It's been like living in a bleeding prison. And cooking all his meals for the next fortnight. They're all in the freezer. My mother's going to come in and defrost them and do his cooking for him. With a bit of luck, you won't even notice I'm not here. Oh, God. God. Look, I know I'm being cruel, and, and I know I'll have to pay for it when I get back, and I don't mind paying for it then, but just... Just do me a favour, God, and don't make me pay for it during the two weeks. Keep everyone safe, please.
I ate that Sharon Louise. She's a mer. I don't know why I ever went to live with her in the first place. Mother, I've come back to live with you. <laughs> Mother, will you make me some cocoa and toast like you used to? I'm going to my room. She's a cow, that's Sharon Louise. I don't know why I ever left you, Mother. Mother, you haven't put enough sugar in this cocoa. Will you go down and get us another spoon? What am I doing, Wall? She's only been back five minutes and she's got me strutting round like R2 bleeding D2. Thanks, Mother. That's brilliant. Oh, what I love being back home. We'll go downtown on Saturday, shall we, Mother, like we used to? Do some shopping together, eh? Just you and me. Yeah, that... Mother, do us a favour and bring the telly upstairs, will you? Melandra. Melandra, I'm, I'm really pleased you've come home. You know, because I've missed you. Oh, I've missed you, Mother. I've been homesick, you know. And I mean, I've never said that. I've, I've never complained because I think kids should have their own lives. But there's, there's been many a time I'd love to have sat and had a talk with you or, or gone to town with you or had a meal or shared a laugh. Mother! Just like, like, not as your mother, but as another human being. Well, Mother, could you get the telly for us? Play school's gonna be on in a minute. But I couldn't, because you had your own life, your own interests and your own friends. None of it to do with me. Yeah, well, that's OK, cos now I've come back home. Yes, you've come home, and that's fantastic. And, and you, you couldn't have picked a better time for it. It'll, it'll be a great help having you here to look after your father. Why, what's wrong with him? Oh, there's nothing wrong with him. It's, it's just with me not being here for the next two weeks. What? With me and Jane going to Greece. Today. You and... going to Greece? What for? For two whole weeks. That Jane? And you? And what's my father had to say about it? Well, I haven't told him. I think it's a disgrace. What? Me own mother behaving like that. Melandra, I thought you'd be made up for me. Made up? Made up! I think it's disgusting. Hold on, what's disgusting about it? Two middle-aged women going to Greece on their own. It's disgusting. Oh, don't be silly. Love, where are you going? I'm going back to my flat. Greece, at your age, you and that Jane, it's obscene. You are jumping to exactly the same conclusions as your father would. You think I'm off to Greece on a grab a granny fortnight? to Greece for the sex. Sex for breakfast, sex for dinner, sex for tea and sex for supper. Sounds like a marvellous diet, love. It is. Have you never heard of it? It's called the F plan. You going to Greece, what for? What am I going for? Shirley, you are one silly bitch. You're 42, not 22. You're just another stupid woman looking for adventure. And the time for adventures is over. I'm going to phone Jane. Tell her I'm not coming.
Hello, Shirley. Is Joe at home? No, Gillian, Joe isn't at home. And listen, if you've come to spill the beans, don't oh, bother. Shirley, I haven't come to spill any beans. I just wanted to check that Joseph wasn't home. Before I gave you this, I want you to have it for your trip to Greece. Would you open it? It is silk, but it's never been worn. You see, I was never brave enough. Oh, I wish. Gillian. I wish I'd had your bravery. Listen, please. please. Shirley, don't say anything. It's yours. I just wanted you to know. I think you're marvellous. Gillian! Gillian really believes it. All that rubbish about me taking a lover. She, she really believes it's possible. In her eyes, I'm no longer Shirley Bradshaw, middle-aged housewife, beginning to sag a bit. I'm Shirley the Brave. Shirley the Marvellous. Shirley Valentine. From now on, when I look in the mirror, I'm not going to say, Christ, you're 42, I'm going to say, hey, Shirley. You're only 42. Isn't that marvellous? She didn't recognise me. I hardly recognise myself these days. I love it here. Don't I rock? That's rock. We met the first day I got here. I found this little place. I found you, didn't I rock? I talked to you. Rock. He's got his name running right through him. Now, of course, I talk to rock, but... He doesn't talk to me. He can't, you see. He's a Greek rock. He can't understand a bleeding word I'm saying. I might have risked the main beach if it had been with Jane, but on my own I felt a bit, you know, conspicuous. Cos Jane met a fella, didn't she? Not here. On the plane. That's to God. Where have you been? Told you. Just to the loo. I, I was beginning to think you'd fallen down it. Shirley. Shirley. See him. What, the walk and groin? Shirley, listen, he's just invited me out to dinner. <laughs> Tonight? He's got a villa on the other side of the island from us with an olive grove. Oh, Shirley, it's only for tonight. We'll still do all the things we planned. You don't mind, do you? 
Listen, Jane, I think you've probably blown the Feminist of the Year award, so just leave it out, will you? I mean, obviously, it's been a difficult time for you since your fella ran off with the milkman. And now you've got this opportunity, I don't want you to give another thought to me. You, you go to his villa and enjoy yourself and give his olives a good pressing. Shirley, thanks for being so understanding. Sit here. Oh, no, no, thanks. I'd rather stand. I can see more. I don't blame you, love. You don't know what's been on these seats, do you? Do you know what I mean? Oh, we usually go to Majorca. Oh. Right. Mm. Travel agent said we'd like it here. So I'm a bit dubious myself. Where's the disco? Where's the bar? More life in a crematorium. Oh, Sydney. It was like I'd come to the far side of paradise. And I loved it. Jane never did come back that night, you know. All the next morning. First I was a bit scared being on my own, but then I found this little place. I thought, why am I so terrified of being on my own? I'm an expert at it. And then I started to relax. She still hasn't come back, you know. Has she, Rock? They must be marvellous olives. isn't it? But if you're a woman on your own, it doesn't half seem to upset people. Hi, Arenas. Good evening, madame. And how are you this evening? Marvellous, thanks. How are you? Good. I'm good. I feel a little pain in the back. But I say to myself, if I feel a little pain in the back, at least it means I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> now, madame, tonight I have for you some calamaris. Cooked with a little garlic, yes? And butter and lemon. Plenty of lemon. It's beautiful. Lovely. Bon appetit, madame. Thanks. Now, listen, love. You can't go on like this. Pardon? It's not right. We can't help noticing that you're on your own. Who? So we've arranged for another chair at our table. Oh, no, no, thanks very much. I want you to come and join us. No, no, thanks very much. I'd really now, much... come on, love. I'll take your drink. I wouldn't be surprised if they all burst out into applause, cos I've been rescued from loneliness by Jeanette yourself, and yeah. Dougie from Manchester. Make yourself at home. Now, have you got a jacuzzi? Uh, no. Well, maybe it's just the thing you've been waiting for. Because you always wanted a jacuzzi, didn't you, Jeanette? I'd had dreams about getting a jacuzzi. Michael Caine's got one, you know. Oh. So we get this jacuzzi like, but what we found was we couldn't fit it in our bathroom. 
So, what I did was... You built an extension. I built an extension, didn't I? It's a good job we're not having soup or I put my head in it and drown myself. Finished? Well, I couldn't eat that. You can say what you like. It's not Lorette, is it? <laughs> Aye. But the thing is, Dougie, I could like Greece. I could, if it were more like Spain. I take your point. <laughs> yeah. It's not, is it? No, it's not. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why Greece isn't like Spain. Because Greece, well, it's all too Greek. Take me point. And that's what's wrong with Greece. It's like them fishing boats out there in the bay. I said to her this morning, didn't I, Thelma? Mm. I said to her, if you take a close look at the side of them boats, you know the bit where it says the name of the boat builder? And I'll bet you a pound to a penny. It says Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I say that yet? I <laughs> bloody did. Excuse me, excuse me. You do watch the Olympic Games, I take it. And you do realise it was the Greeks who invented the Olympic Games. Oh, yes, Jeanette. They invented a lot of things, the Greeks. Where do you suppose your jacuzzi came from? Came out. Ah, yes. But who invented it? The Greeks. Actually, the Greeks. And it was the Greeks, I'll have you know, who were responsible for the most important invention of all, the wheel. The English, don't talk to me about the English, because while the Greeks were building roads and cities and temples, what were the English doing? I'll tell you what the English were doing. They were running round in loincloths, ploughing up the earth with the arse bone of a giraffe. Madame? Hey, mate. What is this? It's calamari, sir. I know that. But what I'm asking you, Zorba, is what is it? Sir, it's calamari. It's a type of fish. Well, it don't look much like fish to me. Sir, I can promise you. This fish. This fish was pulled fresh from sea this evening by my brother in a boat called Noah. Enjoy me. They're that type, you know. If they'd been at the last supper, they'd have asked for chips. Very nice, the squid, isn't it? Pardon me. I say, the squid, the octopus, it's really quite nice. Time. I don't think I'd be too popular, do you? Maybe not. <laughs> Kalinik, something? Uh, yeah, um, I'd like a drink, please. Sure, uh, gin, whiskey, what? And a wine. Greek, Greek wine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, Regina. Will I like that? It's Greek. I think you'll like it. Spiro, Regina. Erkete Costa. And hey, 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 excuse me. I know this sounds a bit soft, but would you mind? I mean, like, would you object if I was to move this table and chair over there by the edge of the sea? You want I move table, chair to edge of sea? Yeah. Why? You don't like my bar? Yeah. It's a lovely bar. It's... It's just that I've got this soft little dream about sitting at a table by the edge of the sea. Ah. A dream. So, I move table to edge of sea. I make your dream come true. Yeah, I think so. Sure, it's no problem. Thanks. Oh, it's my pleasure. I moved table to see, and tonight in my bar, I tell to customer tonight. Uh, tonight, I make someone dream come true. Please. Mm. Funny, isn't it? You know, when you've pictured something and you've imagined how something's going to be, well, it never turns out like that, does it? I mean, for weeks, I've pictured myself sitting here. Sitting here, drinking wine by the sea, and, and I knew exactly how I was going to feel. Now I'm here, it doesn't feel a bit like that. I don't feel at all lovely and serene. I feel pretty daft, actually. And awfully, awfully old. I've led such a little life. And even that'll be over pretty soon. I have allowed myself to lead this little life when inside me there was so much more. And it's all gone unused. And now it never will be. Why do we get all this life if we don't ever use it? Why do we get all these feelings? and dreams and hopes that we don't have to use them. That's where Shirley Valentine disappeared to. She got lost in all this unused life. you expect them to be.
Come, I, uh, I escort you to your hotel. Okay. I, uh, I am Postas Dimitriadis. I'm Shelley. Hello. Hello. Thanks for seeing me home. No, I, uh, I enjoy it. So, uh, tomorrow you won't come with me. Pardon? I, um, I take brother boat. We go around the island. Oh, no, no, thanks. I mean, honestly, you've been really kind, but... No, I it's no problem. It's no problem. It's my pleasure. I, um, I come bring you early. No, 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 really. I mean, I, I don't think I should, You're because... afraid. No, 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 of course You're afraid. not. You're afraid. You're afraid... I won't make fuck with you. What? <laughs> of course, I won't make fuck with you. You are a beautiful woman. You know, a man would be crazy not to want to make fuck with you. But I don't ask you to fuck. I ask you to come a brother boat. Different thing. Boat is boat. Fuck is fuck. Absolutely bloody charming. So I, uh, I come uh, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Um, I bring food, I bring wine, and do we go. Uh, tomorrow, um, I just uh, make you happy. Eh? No need to be sad. And no need to be afraid. I give word of honor. I don't try to make a fuck with you. Okay. Okay. See you in the morning. Oh, God. He's going to my room. Well, Shirley, can you forgive me? I've been completely selfish, haven't I? But I'm going to make it up to you. Oh, come on, say you forgive me. Let's make today the real start of our holiday. I've hired the car. We'll tour the island, stop off and have lunch somewhere really nice, just the two of us. Oh, Shirley, can you forgive me? Of course I forgive you. Ah. Oh. I know you must have been having the most awful time. I suppose you've just been sitting here talking to the wall, haven't you? Never mind. I'll do a quick change and we'll get straight off. Yes, what is it? Room service? Shirley, did you order something? Shirley. Shirley, you come now, you, you late. I, I put um, food, wine on boat, and I wait down, but you don't come. Then, a realization, um, um, Shirley and me, we are uh, going to bed so late last night, um, probably she's uh, overslept. Oh, yeah. So, um, you come now, I, uh, I wait down. Please, please hurry. Uh, I, I um, apologize for uh, interrupt. You may now continue cleaning room. Shirley, what are you playing at? Me! You're the one who went over the walk in groin. Now look, Shirley, you've never been abroad before. You don't know what you're doing. Jane, he's just a kind man. Oh, Shirley. Men like that, these Greek islanders. They're just waiting for bored middle-aged women. Don't you dare! Shirley! I just hope you know what you're doing. I hope for your sake you're going to be safe. Oh, I'm sure I will. He's a very good sailor. And anyway, he's given me his word of honour he won't try and make fuck with me. Dougie, Jeanette, how are you both? 
This is my friend Jane. I was just telling her what a marvellous couple you are. And do you know what she said? She said she'd love to spend an hour or two on the beach with you. Bye bye, Jane. Well, we were just off to the beach, actually. You come with us, love. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Boat, you know. So we try to pass in this direction. Uh, there we are going to find the small bay. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. There we are going to fish. Uh, we eat, drink, talk. No, I don't. Uh... You really know how to talk to women, don't you? I... I mean, most fellas, you know, they've got no idea of how to talk to a woman. No? No. Hmm. They feel they have to take over the conversation. I mean, I mean, with most fellas, if you say something like, like, my favourite season's autumn, they go, oh, oh, is it? My favourite season's spring. And then you've got ten minutes of them talking about why they like spring, and you ain't talking about spring, you're talking about autumn. So what do you do? Talk about what they want to talk about. You don't talk at all. Or you wind up talking to yourself. You don't do that. I, I, uh, I just like uh, listen. Also look. For you, I am. Um, I happy. Hey, Costas. How deep do you think it is down there? Oh, maybe a thousand meters. Go away. Mm. Maybe, maybe, maybe ten thousand. Who knows? Mm. Maybe, maybe so deep. We go on forever. I want to jump in. You want to swim? I want to jump off the roof. <laughs> I think um, Shirley Valentine is um, a little crazy. Costas, Shirley Valentine is loop the fucking loop. Loop the fucking loop. The only thing is, I, I, I haven't got my cosy on. No cosy what is? This room in costume. Ah! It's 
marvelous to be with such a good man. I know whatever happens, he won't take anything from me. I know he'll keep his promise. The truth is, I don't want him to. to come from. stupid to try to hide these lines. They they are lovely because they are part of you and you are lovely. So don't um, don't hide. Be proud. Hmm? Show these these marks show that uh, that you are alive. That you survive. Don't try to hide these lines. They are the marks of life. Oh man full of shit. I think I've fallen in love. Oh, for God's sake, Chef. You're acting like a stupid teenager. I suppose the next thing you're going to tell me was that the Earth moved. Jean, I thought there'd been an earthquake. Oh, spare me the detail, please. Oh, listen, Jane. Jane, listen. I, I haven't fallen in love with him. It, it was sweet. It was a day full of kindness. But I haven't fallen in love with him. I haven't fallen in love with him. I've fallen in love with the idea of living. Why? I mean, why did she have to do this to me? If she wanted to go on holiday, all she had to do was ask. Add a letter. I mean, there's no need for deceit. I mean, I may not be the best husband in the world, Wall, but I love her. I do, I love her. Honest. Get flower. Orea. Orea. Just good flower. How, how much is it? One shadow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, a Paris sir. Bravo, my girl. It's good, it's good that we meet here.
Πάντσον και Σύζευξον του δούλου τούτου εν ομοφροσύνη, στεφάνωσον αυτού τη Αρκαμία, ότι σον το κράτο και σου εστί η βασιλεία και η δύναμη και η δόξα του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο, νυν και αή και ει του αιώνα των αιώνων. Στέφεται ο δούλο του Θεού Σταύρου στη δούλη Θεού Εφη, ει το όνομα του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο Αμήν. Στέφεται ο δούλο του Θεού Σταύρου στη δούλη Θεού Εφη, ει το όνομα του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο Αμήν. Στέφεται ο δούλο του Σταύρου στη δούλη Θεού Εφη, ει το όνομα του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο Αμήν. Στέφεται η δουλειά του Εύη, το δουλειά του Σταύρου, στο όνομα του Πατρό και του Ιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματο Αμήν. Στέφεται η δουλειά του Εύη, το δουλειά του Σταύρου, στο όνομα του Πατρό και του Ιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματο Αμήν. Στέφεται η δουλειά του Εύη, το δουλειά του Σταύρου, στο όνομα του Πατρό και του Ιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματο Αμήν. Ισαία χόρευε η Παρθένο σε σιέμεγα τρει. Κέντε και νιώσαν εμμανούι. Θεόκτε και άνθρωπον. Ανατολή ο τόπο. Family, my friend. Ah, uh, no, Costas, they're lovely. So why, why you go? I just, I just want to be on my own for a bit. Do you understand? You, you are again sad. No. No, I'm not sad. It's just that I go back home soon. Back to your own life. Yeah. Go on, go go back to the doorway for you. Right. Hey, I see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. thought in my head. This shocking thought. And it won't go away. I keep trying to think of other things to make this thought go away, but it won't. It's always there in my head. I didn't go back home. Who would miss me? Zwei Kaffee, bitte. Hey? Two cafes, please. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, two coffees. Right. I mean, look. If I didn't go back, who would really care? I mean, I mean they, they, they'd notice I wasn't there, but they wouldn't miss me. back to being that woman when that woman isn't needed anymore. I've done my job. There's nothing else for me to do. Oh. Shirley, who are you talking to? The wall, Costas. Just the wall. My God. Excuse me. Signal me. I'm serious, Jane. I mean it. Oh, for God's sake. What about your children, for a start? What about them? They're grown up. Jane, I've spent 20 odd years rearing them, looking after them till they were old enough to make their own way, and they have. They've gone. Oh, I mean, they'll say it's awful. They'll say it's, it's terrible to have a mother who went on holiday and didn't come back. But we'll get over it. I mean, would it cause anyone any real suffering if I didn't go home? Would it, Jane? Shirley, every year, millions and millions of people go on holiday. And every year, those same millions and millions of people have such a good time that they don't want to go back. Yeah, but just suppose... And that's all there is to it. Now, yes, if you don't mind, Shirley, I'm trying to order lunch. Can we have two Greek salads, please? And stuffed yeah. tomatoes. Yes. And it's the Moussaka special on? Yes. Yeah, Moussaka special, please. And one lamb with green yeah. beans. Because we don't do what we want to do, do we? No, what? Really what we have to do and pretend it's what we want to do. And um, what I want to do is to stay here and be Shirley Valentine. But what I have to do is to go back, back to being St. Joan of the kitchen sink. Bye, Venus. Thanks. Madame, you come back next year, I hope. Oh, Venus, I hope. Carlo Taxatis, madame. Harry Stowe, Venus. Carete. Shirley, your bags are on board. Come on. We said goodbye. Yes, but um, I are here. So, goodbye, Shirley. Goodbye, Shirley Valentine. See you, Costas. Hmm. Oh. Hmm.
<laughs> and tomorrow we take my brother boat. We go all around the island. You afraid? Um, afraid I won't try to make fuck with you. What? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't ask to try to make fuck with you. I I ask to come brother boat. It's, it's a different thing. Boat is boat and fuck is fuck. Oh my goodness. Uh, excuse me for one moment. It's all right, Costas. You don't have to worry. But do you lose the plane? But don't worry, Costas. I haven't come back for you. Oh. I've come back for a job. A job in this van. A job? You, you won't work here? Yeah. I mean, this place could do with someone to sort it out. I mean, given the amount of time you spend on your brother's boat. to see you on the telephone. Hello? Are you a disgrace? A bloody disgrace! To, 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 to the children, to me, to yourself. I'm a laughing stock. That's what I am, a laughing stock. Listen, Joe, um, I, I can't talk now, I'm busy. I'm working. Do you understand? No, I bloody don't understand. I've taken time from work because of you. Stop this arse and round and get yourself back home. I've had just about enough. Hello? Shirley? Shirley, are you there? This is uh, Clef... Uh, Clef Tika. It's very nice. Oh, you're English. <laughs> oh, what a relief. Well, what is this Clef... Clef... Clef Tika. Oh, it's, it's lovely. It's lamb cooked very, very slowly in oregano. No, I, I don't think so. <laughs> it's all a bit... Uh, uh... I'll tell you what. Listen, there. Uh, it's not on the menu, but would you like me to do you both some chips and egg? Oh, yes. Smash it. <laughs> I'm phoning from work because our phone's out of order. That's why. It's costing me a bleeding fortune this time of the day. Now, listen to me, Cheryl. You belong back here. Don't put the phone down. Don't... Hello, Shirley. Now, listen. Now, Jane's told me all about it, you know, about, um... about you making a fool of yourself with this holiday romance thing. No. No, Joe, you've got it all wrong. Oh, 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 oh OK, no. All right, OK, it happens, OK? Middle-aged women... Make fools of themselves when they go abroad. But look, I'm prepared to forgive you if you prepared to promise that you get yourself on a plane and get yourself back home. Joe, will you listen for one moment? Will you just listen? The only holiday romance I've had is with myself. And, and I think I've come to like myself, really. I think I'm all right. I, I think if I saw myself, I'd say, that woman's OK. Oh, but Shirley, you can't just run away from life. That's right, Joe, I agree with you. And now that I have found some life, I have no intention of running away from it. 
You belong back here. Please, Joe, it's no good to keep phoning, because I'm not coming back. Can't you understand? I'm not coming home. But surely, don't you understand, love? You don't know what you're saying because you're going through the, the change of life. That's right, Joe. That's exactly what it is. It's a change of life. Why don't you go and see her, Dad? She's in Greece. She's not down the sod the road. So, go to Greece. Go to Greece. I've got a business to run. What is it with people when they get old? Old? Who's old? I'm only in my 40s. Yeah, I know. But you're frightened, aren't you? Frightened of what? You're frightened of anything that's different, Dad. I used to like you. I did. You were great, you know. You used to laugh. You used to talk to us all. We've not half become a boring bastard. Oh, here she is. Chips and egg. Smashing. <laughs> Yes, who got that? Yes, who's here? Hey. Tom, for you, one telegram. Oh. Bad news? No. No, not really. It's from Joe. Ah. He's coming to fetch me to take me back home. God love him. He must have been watching Rambo. Ram, your joy is coming here? Yeah. But when, uh, when you come? Eh, uh, Friday. Friday, uh, Friday tom the tomorrow, Friday. Yeah? Yeah, that's... Oh, it's pity, because um, I received a telephone call. I must go uh, in Athens. Uh, my sister is very sick. Um, she wanted me to, uh, to be. So, I saw. You understand, seriously? Oh, yeah, Costas. Of course I understand. I just fell school. I hope he stays for a while. He needs a holiday. He needs to feel the sun on his skin and to be in water that's as deep as forever. I didn't recognize you. I know. I used to be the mother. I used to be the wife. But now I'm Shirley Valentine again. Would you like to join me for a drink? <laughs> 